In this video, I'm going to create a basic object picker script so that when the player clicks the mouse button, a ray will be sent through the mouse cursor and return the game object, if any, that was hit by the ray. This will be the foundation for the next couple of videos that will let us move objects around the scene using the mouse and potentially much more. This topic was chosen by my YouTube community, so a shout out to those who voted. And with that, let's get started. I've already set up the scene with a simple plane and three colored cubes. Before I jump into the coding, there's a bit more setup to do. First, I'm going to create a new layer. This will let me filter the objects which can be picked, and in this case, I only want to pick the cubes and not the plane below the cubes. Clicking on the layer drop-down menu, I'll select the option to add a new layer. I'll call the new layer Pickable, and with that done, I'll select all three cubes and change their layer to Pickable. If you miss this step, the Raycast won't see the cubes and will return a null value. Next, I want to create an empty object that can host the object picker script. I'll name the object Pickable Manager as all the picking code will be on this object. Then I want to create a new flow macro and I'll call it Object Picker. Adding a flow machine to the Pickable Manager, I'll drag and drop the flow macro into the flow machine. I'm also going to create a new scene variable that will hold a reference to the picked game object. I'm making it a scene variable so that other flow macros can have easy access to the variable. I'll name it Picked Object, and since the variable will be assigned by the script, I can leave the type as null. Double clicking to go full screen with the macro, I'm going to add an update event as I want this code to run every frame. This code will raycast from the camera through the mouse cursor and into the game. Raycasting can be an expensive operation, so I only want the code to run when the player clicks the left mouse button. To do this, I'll drag out the flow and search for input get mouse button down. This will evaluate as true only on the frame that the button was clicked, so only once per click. I'll connect the flow and the Boolean value to a branch. If the branch evaluates is true, then I want to do the raycast. As always, there are almost an overwhelming number of options when it comes to raycasting. To find the option I want, I need to scroll down a little. The option I want takes in a ray, a distance, a layer mask as inputs, while outputting a Boolean and a hit info. The hit info will allow me to get a reference to the game object that was clicked on. First, I want to construct the ray. The ray will go from the camera to the mouse cursor. And thankfully, Unity has a built-in command for this. So I'll search for camera screen point to ray, making sure to select the option that does not have the eye as an input parameter. Next, I need to tell the unit what camera to raycast from. Using the fuzzy finder, I'll search for camera main and connect it like so. It's important to note that the camera main command relies on the camera to have the tag main camera. So make sure that your camera has the correct tag. The position I want to send the ray through is the position of the mouse cursor. Once again, Unity has this covered. I'll search for input mouse position and choose the get option. With the ray constructed and connected, I'll set the max distance to 100. This variable, no surprise, controls the maximum distance the ray will travel into the scene. This can be used to control which objects a player could interact with or other game mechanics. Lastly, I need to set the layer mask to control which layers the ray cast can detect on a hit. So using the fuzzy finder, I'll search for layer mask literal and connect it to the ray cast unit. Make sure to set the value to the pickable layer so the ray casting only hits the cubes or pickable objects and not the plane or the terrain. Next, I need to check if the ray cast hit a game object. So I'll pass the flow and the Boolean output to a branch. If the branch evaluates as true, then I want to set the picked object variable to the object that the ray cast hit. So holding Alt, I'll drag the picked object variable onto the flow macro to get a set variable unit. I can access the game object from the ray cast through the hit info. Dragging the value out, I'll search for a ray cast hit collider. Then searching for game object, game object, and passing in the collider, I can get a reference to the game object of the collider, which can then be connected to the set variable unit. Let's push play and see how the code works. In the variables window, I'm going to look at the scene variables so I can see the value of the picked object. If I click on the orange cube, the variable changes to orange cube. If I click on the yellow cube, the variable changes to yellow cube. So it's working. But you may notice that when I move the mouse cursor, the value of picked object doesn't reset. Depending on your use case, this may be okay, but I'm gonna add a little more code so that when I release the mouse button, the variable is reset, or more specifically, the value is set to null. Back into the flow graph, I'm going to add a box around the current code by holding control and dragging the mouse. I'll change the title and the color, and this is a pretty good practice to keep code tidy, and it's one that I've ignored in past videos. Now I want the code to check every frame whether the mouse button has been released. If it has been released, then I want to set the picked object variable to null but I don't want to use a regular update event. The reason is that in future videos, I will want to do some other operations when I release the mouse button. And I can't control the order that the update functions are called, or at least not easily and without error, which means that this new code could run and set the variable to null before any other code runs that may still need access to the picked object. So 
I'm going to instead use a late update event, which is guaranteed to run after all the regular update events, but still gets called every frame. Dragging the flow out from the late update event, I'm going to add an input get mouse button up unit. This command will evaluate is true only on the frame that the button is released. I'll pass the flow and the Boolean output to a branch. If the branch evaluates is true, I want to set the picked object variable to null. So I'll add a set variable unit. Using the fuzzy finder, I'll search for null and connect it to the input value of the set variable unit. Finally, to keep things tidy, I'll add another box around this chunk of code. Once again, pushing play, let's see if the addition is working. You can see that the value of the picked object is set to the game object that I click on, but this time when I release the mouse button, the value is set to null. Having the value set to null when the mouse button is released will be useful in future videos to stop or control the flow of code since I can use the null check unit. So there you go. I created the foundation of pickable objects. This code will allow you to click on an object and get a reference to that game object as a scene variable. While basic, once you have access to the picked game object, you can do anything that your project might require to that game object. In the next video, I'll create code that will allow the player to move the picked object around on the surface of the plane by raycasting to the plane and then updating the position value of the object's transform. If you found the video useful or helpful, please think about hitting the subscribe and like buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out a link to my Discord server and Patreon page in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.